Welcome back to Americanish. My name is Miriam Waba. And I'm Adela Kochab, and together we are the Daughters of Diaspora. All right, we're back. Um, this week's going to be really fun. I'm really excited to talk about today's topic. Um, so as you guys know, we've talked about the difference between Ashkenazi Jews, excuse me, Ashkenazi Jews and Sephardic Jews, uh, theological, cultural differences between those two communities. Um, but a few days ago, you mentioned something in conversation that fascinated me. And it's about how Sephardic Jews, some Sephardic Jews, name their children. Can you tell me about that? Uh, yeah, so it kind of dawned on me when I was talking to, uh, you know, a friend and I was talking about, you know, my cousin Olga and then my other cousin Olga and I was like, Olga, and he's like, wait, is this Olga that lives in Canada? I was like, no, not Olga Canada, Olga Brazil. And he goes, okay. And I'm like, yeah, and then I have Olga's wedding. He's like, which Olga? I'm like, Olga, formerly Mexico, now Switzerland. And he was like, what? How many <laughs> Olgas are there? And the answer is there's a whole bunch. I think there's like seven or eight. And in, just in your family. Just in my family. And I realized Ashkenazi Jews don't name after the living and they don't name after the same person. So Ashkenazi Jews will, you know, name their children after a name that has meaning or, you know, someone in the family who had passed away, like, mm. you know, a great great uncle, you know, and you carry kind of like that legacy. But Sephardic Jews, Syrian Jews specifically, we name after the living grandparent. So for example, on my mom's side, I have four cousins that are named Sammy. Because we all name them after my grandpa Sammy. So my grandpa Sammy walks around and he has his like little four Sammy boys. And he's so happy <laughs> and it's so, so cute. cute. Yeah, um, it's it's adorable. And also like Arlette, my sister's name, there is like four Arlettes just cruising around and we have to differentiate them by calling them one thing or another. So my cousin Olga is like, we, we just call him like, well, there's Olga Canada, there's Olga Brazil. One we just call Olga Chayo because her dad's name is Chayo. And um, it was really hard to keep track of all of this because it's, it's bizarre to people. They're like, yeah, it's like, do you know like Joseph Towell? And I'm like, which one? Like, oh, do you know like A.B. Dweck? Which one? <laughs> because they have the same last names as their cousins. So we just have the same first and last name as our grandparents and our cousins and everyone's the same person. I got lucky. I'm the only Adela because. Good, um, good. I yeah, was going to ask. Yeah, I'm, I'm the only Adela because no one had enough girls in my dad's side of the family to have another <laughs> Adela. So I really lucked out. But there could have been three. There yeah, potentially could have been three. Yeah, you never know. There's there's room for growth in there's the family. There's room for growth. Yeah. So um, tell me about the spreadsheet. What the, is spreadsheet. the spreadsheet. Yeah. So um, in my family, to keep track of it, right, because every year there was new additions, right? Someone had another baby in my family. is huge. On all sides, family is huge. Like eight siblings, you know, it's, it's huge. So um, originally we had like a family tree that was handwritten with everyone's birthdays, and it was framed in my great-grandma's house in Brazil. But it just got so big that now it's an Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> and it's um, the spreadsheet it's known as in the family. And um, there's a grandchild usually in charge of like upkeeping it for that year. And once a year, they send us out the updated spreadsheet with, you know, this person married that person. This person had this baby. <laughs> um, all of the people's birth dates are on there. So you see all the Olgas and all the Ezras. And um, it's funny because, like, you know, we'll, we'll talk about the spreadsheet and growth and all these things. And my sister always, like, pulls it up, like, whenever we forget someone's birthday or, like, who's older than who. She's like, let's get the spreadsheet. And we all pull it up on our phones. <laughs> this is very organized. Yeah. I have to be honest. This is great organization yeah. skills on y'all's part. That, that's courtesy of my, my uncle Joe. Um, he's, he's one of two Joes. <laughs> <laughs> that's courtesy of my uncle Joe, um, who did a phenomenal job organizing the spreadsheet. Shout out. Shout Thank out you for Joe. organizing yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now there's like great grandkids on that spreadsheet too. So. so what's it like having this huge family? And I ask because I, I grew up here. Obviously, I'm Arab, so I by default have like, not kidding, 56, 50. Last time I checked, 56 cousins, but they're oh. not around. Like they're in Egypt. So I, I grew up with just my immediate nuclear family, and I don't know what it's like to have such a large family. What is was it really cool? Because I'm kind of jealous. <laughs> So it is very cool and very, very fun because like on my mom's side alone, like we have 20 first cousins yeah. and like all of them other than me and my siblings are under 15 years old. So it's just like a ton of babies just walking around. And like, actually, I was one thing with like, um, you know, some of the toddler age ones who were maybe three or four. And I was like, do you know who I am? And remember, I live in New York, right? So they know who I am, but they see me once every three months. And they're like, you're Adela. And I'm like, yes. And they're like, yes, you're married to Solomon, my brother. <laughs> and you're Ariel's mom, my sister. And I was like, no. <laughs> No, that that's that's not quite they it. They got the right idea. <laughs> yeah, the wrong. They person. got the right family, just the wrong relationship <laughs> yeah. there. Um, it's cute, but the, the the fun part of it is that you always learn new things about your family, right? 
So I was actually um, with my friends. They'd come to visit me in Mexico um, over spring break like five years ago, six years ago. We were with my grandma. I forgot what we were talking about. My grandma just said, yeah, like when I was shot in the knee. <laughs> it was like, whoa. What? She goes, yeah, you know, when I was shot in the knee. And I was like, wait, I don't know this story. My friends are like, your grandma was shot in the knee? And I'm like, I I guess she was. She explained the story. So years, 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 years ago before I was born, she was at an airport, which was shot up and a bullet ricocheted into her knee. And at the time, medical technology wasn't great or something. So she just kind of left the bullet in her knee <laughs> forever. And then a couple of years ago, she actually had to get surgery because it finally started wearing out. And I remember like thinking like, oh, is that why you're getting knee surgery? And she said, yeah, because of the bullet. And Oh, my God. Isn't that the most immigrant <laughs> thing, though, to hide big secrets until they are no longer relevant and then just dawn them upon you? Yeah. Like, that's, what? Dad's a communist? Most... Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Did not know that. Yep. yep. That's that's the immigrant way. Yeah. Um, so I really get to learn a lot of new things from her. Um, and it's just it's funny how she brings it up and things like that. But if there's anything I got from her, because her name's Adela, right? And I'm Adela Jr. So there's two Adelas. There's me and my grandma. If you find us on Facebook, we're both Adela Kohab, and her picture on Facebook is with me. So people Aww. will see, and they're like, is this your profile? I'm like, no, that's my grandma. It's like, yes, that's me, but that's my grandma. So um, I inherited her stubbornness. Uh -huh. So, um, you know, like I, I started thinking about like things we share in common. She, you know, number one, loves smoking hookah, which I think is phenomenal. She is a heavy hookah smoker. Um, she also um, really loves vaping. <laughs> Are you serious? But wait, get this. Uh, <laughs> old Sephardic woman vape. She has a cardamom vape. Wow. That's classy. <laughs> it's classy. So she's she's very interesting. She also loves wine. Um, and her and my grandpa have an interesting relationship in that we were on a cruise once uh, also years ago. And my grandpa said, I'm going to go to the casino. Don't tell your grandmother and don't let her go to the martini bar. <laughs> and as soon as he left, my grandma's like, your grandpa's at the casino. So let's go to the let's martini <laughs> bar. <laughs> and that's 50 years of marriage right there. Beautiful. We um, got a grandma on the pod. Yeah. Yeah, she's she's a great grandma. I'm really lucky to be named after her. Um, but I think like the moment that I can most relate with her that I can imagine her doing had she been my age mm. was um, in middle school. We had a dress code. Right. And like we had a very intense dress code and it was yeshiva. So we had to like cover and we had to wear skirts and they didn't really wear, let us wear colors. Right. Like we couldn't wear bright colored nail polish. Um, we couldn't really wear anything bright, so I would wear hot pink undershirts under white shirts. Mm -hmm. And they would send me to the office, and they'd be like, you have to take that off. And I'm like, why? They're like, well, we can see the pink through the white. I'm like, you're right. My shirt's so see-through that you could see my undershirt, so I should definitely take off my undershirt, right? <laughs> and they'd just be like, stop. Like, you can't keep doing this. <laughs> um, when I Obviously, the, the tank top, um, I couldn't keep that up because they kept you know, calling me out for it. So instead I started wearing knee high socks that just mm. had different colored stripes. Yeah. I would just show up with like these stanzas and I'm like, well, I have to wear socks. They actually had a sock rule in my school. You had to wear socks. And the best was, um, they would send me to the office when I would wear slippers to school without socks. And they sent me to the office and they're like, your mom has to come and bring you socks or else we can't send you back to class. And they literally called my mom and we have immigrant moms. Yeah. They don't waste time, right? <laughs> they're not like that mom's like, oh, she needs socks. I'll skedaddle in a minute. You know, like that's <laughs> not our mom. Skedaddle. <laughs> skedaddle. I don't know what people talk, but um, yeah, so they would call my mom and be like, your daughter's not wearing socks and we can't send her to class until she wears them. And my mom's like, so she's going to sit in the office until I bring her socks. And they said yes. And she's like, OK, I guess you're going to have to sit with her. I, I can't bring her socks. My mom's a single working mom. You know, she can't just drop things to bring her daughter socks. So after like the second period of me just sitting there, like talking with the secretary, she's like, just go back to class. Woo go back. Yeah. <laughs> So that's uh, that's the spirit. I, I can imagine if my grandma would have been in Hillel Yeshiva Middle School in New Jersey, that's exactly what she would have done. Um, she told me a lot of really fun stories. Like one time she left my grandpa abandoned on a beach without shoes and like drove away in a Jeep, hysterical laughing. <laughs> um, she's a fun old lady. And I think it's important to be a fun old immigrant lady. So yeah. that's, that's what I hope to be one day. Those little acts of rebellion are really some of the most fulfilling moments because you're not being you know reckless or dangerous or putting anybody in danger but you're making a statement by inconveniencing yep the man in power <laughs> whoever the man or woman may be and yep. i love that and i love that that's what you got from your grandma oh 100 percent, 100 percent. that's really sweet and speaking of funny relationships between grandparents um i have one and then we'll wrap up my when my grandma used to get mad at my grandpa 
he'd hide the TV remote, like, someplace really high. <laughs> so she'd have to ask him for help, so she'd talk to him, and that would be the way that they, he'd, like, break the tension. And I always found that, like, to be so loving and affectionate, little, like, acts of love that just mean the world. And he'd, he'd like, tell me about it. He'd be like, oh, she's upset about X, Y, and Z, and then he'll, like, hide the remote really high <laughs> up. <laughs> she'll, like, spend hours looking for it, and then she'll have to ask him for help. Hey, I'm taking notes. Old yeah. people are so wise. They know everything. I I am here to learn. Amen. So. Amen. All right, guys. Thank you for tuning in for this episode of American-ish, and we'll catch you on the next one.